Meantime, Hawaiian Electric is denying that its power lines sparked the deadliest wildfire in U.S. history in the last 100 years. The company claims its power lines had been shut off for more than six hours before workers witnessed a new fire that afternoon, ultimately killing at least 115 people, destroying thousands of structures and businesses. Hawaiian Electric admits their power lines did spark a fire the morning of August 8th, which was later put out by firefighters. The company released its first statement on the Maui fires in response to nearly a dozen lawsuits it's now facing, saying, quote, we believe the complaint is factually and legally irresponsible. It is inconsistent with the path that we believe we should pursue as a resilient community committed and accountable to each other as well as to Hawaii's future. Joining me now is Mike Morgan, the attorney representing the plaintiffs against Hawaiian Electric. Mike, thank you so much for your time. First of all, just talk to us about what's at the heart of these lawsuits. Well, really at the heart of these lawsuits is a failure in operations, a failure to prepare, and really allowing a very predictable situation that we've seen time and time again in California and other places to unfold in this community of Lahaina. <clears throat> and it, it's just devastating. You know, and Mike, we read part of that response from Hawaiian Electric. Uh, the company denies culpability in this. What is your response? Well, it's not really my response, but I think when we look at their response to the lawsuit from the county of Maui, what we really take from it is what they don't say. And so they tell us that they started the initial fire. And what they're saying is that they're not responsible for the rest of the devastation because another fire that took place 75 yards from that first fire wasn't put out correctly by the Maui Fire Department. And that's really an unfair statement. And in this stage of the investigation, it's very premature. There's actually five different fires that took place there. And the way that these wildfires work is it's known that if the fire is started by the power lines, like it was in this case, it can smolder, it can spread, and it can lead to this type of devastation. So I really think it's just finger pointing by Hawaiian Electric to try to take some of the accountability away from them. You know, and Mike, it very well could be finger pointing, but as you just said, there were five different fires. So what if it does turn out that the power lines didn't ultimately cause the deadly fires? What's next? Or do you think that's not even really an option that's on the table? I mean, look, from what we've seen so far, I think that would be highly, highly, highly unlikely. I mean, anything's possible, but from the preliminary investigations from ATF, from Hawaiian Electric's own mouth that the the fire that they think caused it started 75 yards away from a fire that they admit they caused. I don't see that happening. Yeah, I mean, 75 yards does seem to be uh, a bit of a coincidence there. Uh, Mike, first, tell us, how do you think this is likely to end? Are we you know, likely to see settlements here? Could this end up going to court? I think in some form or fashion, this has to go to court. Again, we are still in the very preliminary stages. We don't know everyone that may be accountable for this. And so at this stage, we are in the process of just gathering evidence, you know, taking statements, finding out everything that we can. And so what happens next is still going to be in the court's hands. Absolutely. And in our hearts and minds, thoughts still with the people there of Maui. All right, Mike Morgan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.